welcome back. I believe this marks one, week 126 of the weekly teaching ladder. Um, that's always good fun. We say some good, good greetings before the game. Uh, yep. I did wish them good luck and then issued the challenge. So, uh, yeah, this is our opportunity to play games with a higher rated and a lower rated opponent at least for most players, and then get to review the game afterward and see what was done well, and what can be improved upon for next time. Um, despite offering this bishop exchange, this is not something I fully understand, but we can fake it. Fake it till we make it. Um, ah. Wait a second. I mean, I've done this before. It did not occur to me to ask if that was a misclick. Um, we can always play a rematch if this uh, doesn't turn out the way we hoped. Um, but yeah, it's super sharp stuff, isn't it? Um... So, I've fallen for this before, and that's how I'm managing to rattle this off so quickly. I apologize if this in any way seems rude or disrespectful. It's just that I've been here, I know this particular trap, and I know it hurts to fall for it. Uh, so that's how you remember the things that you've fallen for, and don't fall for them again. Um... So I'm threatening a lance drop to take this and corner the king. Um, so, yeah. With the king and the rook together, this becomes a hot spot in a hurry. <laughs> um, so I think at this point, if I were in my opponent's shoes, I might try to I need to defend the pawn, and I need to, like, I want to keep my bishop, but I can't keep the bishop, so I'll get the best deal I can for it, and I'll sack the bishop there. And this actually leads to a quandary for me, is that, do I take this horse, or do I pursue this attack that I don't think I can checkmate with? But, like, I've given away a silver if I don't take that. So I kind of have to take back. Um, but yeah, now they have a chance to defend their position. Shogi's not like chess where there's just like one tactic lights out. It takes a concentrated effort to win a game. Um, there are positions you can get into that are very tactical in nature, but... Generally speaking, it's hard to get positions where you miss one thing and the whole game ends immediately. Usually there's a series of decisions leading up to that point. Um, Alright, so if the silver... Okay, I want to bring my horse back into the game. Back toward my camp, if possible. Which might not be possible. And... Yeah, Shogi's a game of negotiation. So, I'm threatening both to bring the horse back toward my king. I'm also threatening, um, I don't know. Uh, I just don't know. Um, Oh yeah, if they place the silver on this side of the board, then they cannot use it on the other side of the board. The silver can only go one place at a time. Um, Alright, so I'm going to use my other bishop at this point and try to win this lance. Um, this might be a bit of a fool's errand. I might be overplaying this. Surely I could just back off, play a normal castle, and not worry about grabbing pieces at this point. But, um... 
I don't know. The problem with this idea is that they can surround my horse in the corner. Oh, welcome everyone. Uh, when I'm playing somewhat serious games, I do put the channel into emotes only mode. I still hope you enjoy this. Um, and yeah, upon conclusion of the game, we'll go back into normal chat mode. But yeah, welcome Shogi Harbor party of 18 or party of 16. Uh, yeah, sorry I skipped out at the very end of the lecture or the discussion. Um, you're reviewing a couple very interesting games this morning. Uh, at least for me, it was morning. Um, and yeah, there was so much to work on and figuring out how to checkmate. Um, so it was a very interesting thing. Uh, tomorrow morning, there's going to be Shogi Sunday, so make sure not to miss that. Although I'm preaching to the choir here, aren't I? Alright, so I multiple times here thought, hey, I could just take this pawn, nothing's defending it. Uh, there's a rook defending this pawn. It also occurred to me, maybe I drop the knight here to try to checkmate the king. Guess what? This rook is also protecting that square. So sh yeah, shogi's not an easy game. Even when you get a really good position, winning it can be quite challenging. Um... That said, a rook would be kind of nice, but more realistically, I should probably just... Hmm. Well, if I could get two lances bearing down on this and a third piece joining the attack, maybe I have something here. So maybe I should grab the lance and then try to continue an attack somehow. The other idea is maybe a two horse takes pawn, threatening a knight drop here. I don't know. Feels like there's many possibilities, all of which seem somewhat reasonable. I think the tie-breaking factor here... Okay, I'm like completely discounting the possibility that my opponent does a successful attack, aren't I? I can't completely discount that. Um, yeah, my position is very good, but like this pawn advancement does actually form a threat. The most reasonable thing I could do is respond to this threat somehow. My rook is floating out here somewhere that if I were to lose a bishop, that would be hit. So let's actually use the rook and the pawn to cover the square. And then I was going to say the tie-breaking factor here is that if I take the lance, they can't like quickly surround my horse in the corner. Um... And I really wanted the lance to continue this attack. Uh, but, yeah. I think after we conclude this game, this might be a separate video or maybe not a video at all. I'll review my games from this morning. Uh, it might be some live stream exclusive content. Uh, we had some very exciting games this morning. Uh... I've been looking in Shogi Harbor's Discord for some ideas, and one idea presented by one member of our community was Kako Tofu. And I'm like, okay, well, that seems kind of cool. Let's try it. Uh, so I tried that, and then looked at my opponent's rank and realized, hmm, okay, this is a high variance strategy, but also. I was playing it against a very skillful opponent and was really regretting my choice. But uh, we had some fun games this morning. Um, Alright, so this pawn threatens to join the attack. Let's take the lance. And then if we could get both lances and some more stuff all aiming at the square, that'd be great. If not... Okay, so they're hitting my horse. I almost forgot about this, because I'm so fixated on the king and on my commentary. <sighs> Fixate a bit less, play a bit better. Nothing is supporting this silver. If my first idea was I could bring the horse here to hit the silver, but then I see this gold can advance. Um, and maybe that gets complicated. 
The next idea I see is that my horse goes back this way. And it's not super easy for the opponent to deal with my threats. Um, I mean, yeah, they could bring the silver back, but who would do that? And that might not be the right response either. Um, so, horse, gold, I mean, if I take it... Hmm. Yeah, I don't see any tricks here. Really what I'm trying to bait is, can they drop this silver so I know where it's going to be, and the rest of my pieces can freely float about attacking everything. A silver out here is, like, super distant from the king. That's kind of why I'm trying to bait this drop. Um. Okay. I really want to sack here, um, but I don't need to, do I? Um, hmm. Well, if I do, it speeds up my attack, um, but... Hmm. What's the fastest way to attack here? My original idea was just drop a lance and then take here multiple times and hope that it's mate. Um, they're trying to defend against that. Um, oh, nothing's defending this point now that the silver's moved. This is the new hot target. Um, yeah, so let's hit the new target. It's it's a nice, easy target if uh, the silver moves up to try to, I don't know, join this attack and make it move faster. We can take here and win this silver. If they push the pawn, this completely shuts down their attack. Um, yeah, there are ideas about me dropping pieces and stuff, but they don't seem to lead anywhere immediately. I'm still trying to bait them to drop this silver somewhere so that my other pieces are free to float about attacking whatever they want. Um, once I can pin down where all their pieces are located, this becomes a lot safer for my king and a lot harder for them to move around their remaining pieces to try holding things together. Um, okay, so things... <laughs> Here they've split, the, here's their defense, here there's their attack, and here I've got multiple pieces just waiting, but I think it's their time. They have three pieces attacking this square. Actually, this horse, we hear a proverb that like a horse is worth three generals in defense. If I just bring that back here, where are they going to attack? Yeah, I could take the pawn, but who's going to take a pawn? Um, hmm. Also, I could start running the king if I'm, like, really concerned. Um, no, but if I run the king, like, then this pawn hits the square with check. I don't want that. Hmm. So they've dropped this out here. This cannot defend this square. If I just pile all my pieces on this square... Hmm, do I have better? Oh, okay, drop the lance and then drop a knight. That looks epic. Do I have better? Drop the knight, pawn takes, horse takes, threatening stuff that I don't know. Um, I'm not sure horse takes does a ton. It looks cool, but... Hmm. Hmm. 
Oh, <laughs> I could also take the silver out here and then take this pawn. That would be drama. Um, if I had one extra move, that would be, like, devastating. Um, I don't, but if I did, that would be devastating. Um, hmm. Well, maybe I wait until they push this pawn. We take it, silver takes, and then I take this. Then they drop the pawn here and I cry. Maybe not. Maybe not today. Um... Okay, I have an idea. Let's do it. <laughs> You might think this is a massive overplay, um, but no, I think material is not the only concern here. So this is loose. They're threatening to attack me stronger. I bring my horse out of the corner, bring my other horse out of the corner. Admittedly, it's in the opponent's hand now, but now I'm hitting a lot of stuff. This can't be bad. Um, threatening to push this pawn to win the silver, or the silver just, like, goes off into this zone that's super far away from my king. Meanwhile, if the silver moves away, I'm threatening a knight drop. If this king retreats, this is mate and one. And all they have to defend with is this lousy bishop. <laughs> so... Interesting. Let me double check that I've got the correct overlay set. I do. Very good. What do you suppose our next proverb is? P R O V E R B. Drop where your opponent wants to drop. Yeah, that's a fun one. So, yeah, this gold and this gold and this knight and all that can't defend this pawn. There is a proverb about fugire, that is the state of not having a pawn in hand. And that's one of the many things that's going on in this position. Um, all right, so, pawn up, silver takes pawn, knight drop wins a rook. Do I want a rook? I don't know. Maybe. Um, probably. I like rooks. Do I want something else, though? I want the king. Lance drop. Any move. I take here. Silver takes. Lance takes. Does not mate. Probably. All right, so yeah, we caught the opponent in this state of them not having a pawn in hand. And I mean, maybe there's some way they could kick my horse, but I don't think so. If the silver moves away, I win their rook and then somehow use that rook against them. Um, it is somewhat concerning that this silver could promote and then take out my rook. Um, so I'm thinking there might be more than one idea here. But this silver and this rook and everything are all poised to try to attack me. And I don't like that. I don't want to be attacked. Maybe if they take here, I just like walk away, defend this point, and ask what their next move is. 
It feels like there's got to be some other way to do this, though. But yeah, the threat to win the Rook um, might coerce them into, like, dropping a bishop and trying to exchange bishops or something. Or, yeah, abandoning uh, the silver so that they don't lose the Rook. That wasn't my intention, but I'll take it. Um... Mm. The silver drop is so tempting. Hmm. Is there anything they can do that would stop the silver drop from being effective? Without, like, worsening their position? Um... Like, if I drop it here, the king just runs out this way. I don't want to drop it unless it's mate. Even though I'm about to get another silver. Hmm. Yeah, they could drop the bishop to counter my bishop, and I'm trying to figure out if that's effective or ineffective. I think it's effective. Yeah, so we're going to prevent a bishop drop or something of that sort from... Uh, per we're going to prevent them from completing a castle, basically. The king goes back out toward the center. And then we remove this. I promise I'm not trying to snipe the rook. I really want the king, but there's all these pieces in the way. So we have to take the pieces out, apparently. Um... Yeah, this is such a heavy drop. Thankfully, I got another one. But with a rook and three generals and a bishop in hand, like they have some ability to defend their king for a bit. Um, pawns? Oh yeah, that's the other thing that's complicating this, is that even though I have one pawn in hand, um, I can't really drop it thanks to the special rule called Nifu. So, given that, oh, okay, if Lance, they have to block with the gold, but eh. Like, Pawn takes Pawn, threatening to promote here, threatening to drop other pieces to continue the attack, seems clearly correct. Oh, I see, and I could use my Rook here that's a way to use it effectively. They are threatening a bishop drop on this square. Um, so maybe I bring the rook over one first. They take my pawn, and we come up with some way to continue this attack. But I don't want to see a bishop right next to my king here. I don't want to lose my knight. I don't want, like, all sorts of stuff that could be bad to happen. This defends focal points up here. Um, Alright, I think I'm threatening knight drop, even though I don't have a gold general yet. If I had a gold general, knight drop, king over, gold drop would be checkmate. Um, yeah, they see that I'm trying to threaten stuff. They move. Not even sure that that correctly deals with threats, but I am threatening stuff, is the point. <sighs> Lance drop is obvious, perhaps too much so. Um, hmm. I want to surround this king. Hmm, I have an idea. It looks crazy. I want to extend the range of my rook. 
On the surface, this looks crazy. Um, because they can they attack the square twice and clearly can just capture it. Um, but the subtle point here is that a gold cannot retreat the move that it, the way that it moves forward. So they can also cannot drop a pawn right behind this gold to support it. So this actually speeds up the attack by one move, I think. If the gold weaves left, we attack from the right. If it weaves right, we attack from the left. It has to pick a side. Neither way I've taken this square. Um, yeah, otherwise, like, had I just dropped the lance directly in front of the pawn instead of sacking a pawn, maybe that still would have worked, but I think this is one move faster. I could be wrong. It's tempting to try to run, but there's unfortunately nowhere to run here. Nor to run to. Alright, I extend the range of my rook. Um I've got another pawn. Hmm. Setting up this discovered check, among other stuff. So I'm threatening a gold drop, I'm threatening if they take this I push the pawn and then do the gold drop next. Um, it's a rough position. Unfortunately, so there is a proverb about the rook defending the king well, but the rook has to, like, be on the second rank, and, like, not right next to the king. It's difficult for the rook at such proximity to the king to be able to defend it effectively. In this case, it actually cuts off a retreat square, unfortunately. Um... So, yeah, dropping on this diagonal is futile because my horse, as well as the pawn, or promoted pawn, both cover this. Anything they can block with, my horse would just take, and the king can't take back. If the king moves, I have a gold drop made. Maybe there was some checkmate instead of this... Silver eight two, uh, he she, or two eight. Um, but yeah, my promoted bishop can take this. They can block again. My promoted bishop can take the next blocker, and then the gold drop on the square will be checkmate. Or in fact, in this case, um. Yeah, we don't even need a gold general to checkmate here. That'll do it. Thanks for the game. So, one great appeal of the teaching ladder is that after playing the game, we get a chance to review it together. Um, this is fun, no matter what your rank is.
<laughs> yeah, sharp game. <laughs> uh, you learn a lot each time you play. Uh, so, and it takes guts to ask questions. Uh, it takes guts to further guts to actually conduct the post game review as the player who didn't win the game. I hope they're up to that challenge, but not everybody is, and that's fine. <laughs> ah. Yeah. Uh. So, yeah, up to them. If they would prefer, they could start uh, the post-game review and ask all the questions they want and all this. It's easiest that way, but if they... If this post game review is something kind of new to them, then it's totally fine to have me try to conduct it. But then I'm having to try to guess what the questions are that they had. So there's multiple ways to do post game analysis or review together. Um, but yeah, um, it, yeah, it can be intimidating. But. Um, all right. Uh, would you like to uh, read the? Oops. Uh, ask questions, or prefer I try to guess. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's multiple ways that can happen. Ah, uh, Alex's strategy in this is to try to never hit Byoyomi. Some people are just afraid of it. And yeah, um, let's see. Also, the interface here, even though I find it a bit straightforward, I had to learn it at some point. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, it's good practice, I think. Uh, Yeah, I typoed the word exchange there, but yeah. Um, there's a lot of ways about this. Uh, uh, I think pros call this the tempo loss bishop exchange opening. And it's entirely playable. A lot of people will play, a lot of amateurs play this very frequently. Um, I don't know at a pro level how popular it is, because I don't know popularity of pro openings. Some people keep better taps on that than I do. Um, yeah. I think you might even find some games that I submitted to Shogi Sunday, where I did some things somewhat like this in some regard. The move order might be different and stuff. Um... Ah, okay. It's, uh, in this case, I'm threatening the fork I did in the game. The gold uh, does defend. In a different opening, uh, pawn by six is playable. Um, uh, in this particular case, uh, pawn 5-6 might be met by bishop 5-7. Uh, uh, so yeah, it, it definitely helps to be the one asking the questions, because otherwise the uh, opponent's trying to have to guess what the questions are, so it's much better to ask them to, just directly. Uh, But yeah, I think this opening uh, is what's called uh, Tempo Loss uh, Bishop Exchange, and many amateurs uh, frequently play it with uh, good results. It's totally fine. Uh, my bishop drop, I 
think is something similar to uh, parallel diagonal bishop. Um, yeah. <laughs> At this point, I don't understand the position. <laughs> it's good fun. <laughs> Let's see. Opening opposing rook more often than not arises from bishop exchange with tempo loss. Oh, now I know. Wow, I did not realize that. <laughs> Uh Yeah. <laughs> um Uh closer to the king and try to counter attack. Um so like this if you can defend this point so like you defend this and then i take here and you like do something i don't know uh yeah something like uh i don't know yeah Obviously, this is a bit messy. Um, uh, yeah. There's a lot of uh, ways. <laughs> yeah. by this before so yeah this is just so powerful uh at least to me it feels powerful <laughs> yeah so How do you spell this? There are weaknesses, like right here. Um, It's such a mess. Uh, there might be some way about it. I. Uh, it's hard to say, isn't it? Like, even during the game, as I blitzed into this, the only reason I played quickly here is because, yeah, I've done this before, I've been on the receiving side of it, and the punishment felt severe enough. Ah. Yeah. Yeah, that that's the key point here, I suppose. Um, Although, who knows, maybe if I take the bishop there might still be other... I don't know. It's hard to say. Yeah, but this defense is kind of important. Um. <laughs> uh. 
So yeah, when you exchange the bishops, uh, this defense is like why I do this. Uh, yeah, so uh, it's just something I don't have to watch out for. Hmm. Yeah, little, little tips along the way. Um, oh yeah, uh, yeah, I liked that. That was really resourceful. I thought that was really clever. Yeah, give them a chance to play a good move, and they played a good move. Maybe I should have just, like, retreated my bishop. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was good. Like, yeah. Um, it's quite a fight for me at this point. <laughs> hmm. I couldn't find the most efficient way to break through. Maybe there is something super efficient, but somehow I doubt it. Committing the lance here might have been a mistake because it kind of cuts off my horse and I've not built a castle. And like, yeah, I'm trying to win the game quickly, but this might not be the quickest way to do it. Just simply playing a normal game might be the quickest way. Um... <laughs> yeah, it's just a bishop. Yeah. For somebody from a chess background, where you like you'd panic if you've given away too many pawns or you lost a knight. Like coming to Shogi, it's such a bright world where um <laughs> yeah like i haven't even castled um, yeah this i was not such a fan of my own move Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think they just play this very well, this part, at least. <laughs> well, yeah, I get another small piece and another small piece, and this slowly adds up. Um, Yeah, no, this, they do the right thing in punching back and trying to smash my castle in the middle of the board. It completely makes sense. It also makes sense, the, the sensation they're having here, like, oh crap, what do I do now? Um, yeah. Ah. Hmm. Uh, first join, I tried static rook, uh, and it was way too confusing. Uh, then I tried fourth file rook, which, uh, 
didn't at all suit my attacking uh, personality. Then I switch to alternating third and central file rook, both of which were great. So yeah, I guess that's what I know. Um, so. Yeah. I think for beginners, I recommend third file rook. Like, you just put the rook on the left, put the king on the right, build a reasonable castle. Could be Mino, could be half Mino, could be any of the Minos, could be Anaguma, could be whatever. Um, um, but yeah, third file rook is a good attacking uh, opening, I think. Uh, I'm, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, actually, you know, as best as I can tell, you just are constantly drowning and, like, uh, yeah. Yeah, it makes sense, I think, to try to stick with, like, a third file rook opening. Any of them, really. Um, yeah, clearly, like, it, it's funny. I struggled so long trying to play fourth file rook because it had such a nice defensive shape in the opening. And then I'm like, well, how do I attack with this super defensive shape? You really, it's difficult to force an attack when you're playing such a defensive strategy. Uh, third files, there seems to be a lot of ways to attack. Um... Uh. Yeah, this is impressive. Like, what the heck? <laughs> that's, that's not even fair. That is beautiful. Uh. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, we saw this little uh, tug of war thing going on. <laughs> um, hmm. And yeah, I was trying to get them to slow down their attack. Um, yeah. Yeah, this is good. Yeah, that's a weakness for sure. Hmm. Uh. <laughs> um.
This is such a sharp position, but yeah, it's so necessary. Mm. Um. Hmm. Well, dang. That puts a damper in all of this. Uh. <laughs> uh. Hmm. Hmm. This is so confusing. <laughs> this is such a wild position. <laughs> um. Hmm. Horses just aren't the greatest attacking pieces in the world. Um. Um. Hmm. Yeah, this is... This is pretty wild. Uh... Yeah. Um. Hmm. Probably should do like two, three, four. Um. This is impressive. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what the best way for me to defend my king at such short notice here is. I, I'm not even sure, like, how... I, oh, yeah, there's this idea. Yeah. This might be playable. So... <laughs> uh... Uh... Yeah, this is kind of nuts. <laughs> I just, like, yeah. Uh... <laughs> yeah, like, this is... So, so strong, I think. This is fascinating. Honestly. Shogi is such a rich game. With so many different ways you can play it. So, yeah. Like, um... Hmm. I wonder... I wonder... Hmm. Yeah, probably retreat. If you can safely retreat, and I think you can, this retreat seems quite reasonable.
Um, oh, wow. Yeah, actually, that retreat's probably safer. Uh huh. Then we just have to keep running. So it's a question of who checkmates first here. Um. <laughs> <laughs> this is really, really sharp. Uh, <laughs> this, yeah. Uh, but, uh, if Gota wins, then this is best. <laughs> There's, uh, So this is a strat, and this is a way you can approach the game that would just, like, immediately go into an endgame. If you know you can win the endgame. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, this, being able to take the silver whenever you need it is also quite helpful. Um, hmm. <laughs> Yeah. There's something incredible about these Shogi endgames. There really is. Uh... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh <laughs> uh Yeah, hmm. Yeah, silver four seven. Um Yeah. I mean during the game this thought occurs to me. Uh Uh, yeah, this is kind of, um, I mean, this is one of the things I mentioned that I was aiming for, uh, uh, Oops. Yeah. It's, uh... So, yeah, this definitely would be an excellent defensive move. Um, but... Yeah, without an attack, suddenly this gets... I don't know how I would win this, but it feels untenable somehow. Yeah. Uh... Uh, yeah. Ah! Yeah.
That makes sense. Yeah. Because then we can move that here and then up and over and over and whatever. Yeah. So that's a way to get this promoted. Uh, that makes sense. That's quite logical. As for whether I have time for it, I don't know, but... Like, if I can stop the opponent's attack, I have a clear line of sight. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, maybe there's something, like, I don't know. I, I'm not sure how you do this. Um, something like this. So, yeah, there, it's a balancing act for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I probably should castle, you know, sometime. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but where's the excitement if I castle? Uh, no, but, like, seriously, uh, it would probably behoove me to spend some time castling my king, putting it somewhere halfway safe, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is so tempting, it's really, it's called for, uh, Uh Yeah, this is where things get super rough. <laughs> Think you made the best of this, but uh there it's no. <laughs> it, you trying to hold this this seems very very challenging. Um, yeah, I think they made the best of it, but when you know that I like trying to win material because I come from this chess background, I, taking the pieces, that's something that's easy to keep track of and understand. Yeah. Um, sometimes this other night drop too, but yeah. There's just so much to keep track of, and eventually it's just too much. Um... But, yeah, moving this silver, I guess it did avoid me attacking the silver to force it to move. When I say attacking, I mean attacking it again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh... Yeah, 
so <laughs> I gave him the bishop. I'm like, uh, good luck defending this position with that bishop. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, bishops aren't great defensive pieces. Horses are great. Bishops can do some things. Oh. Yeah, that looks a lot more patient and reasonable than what I did. <laughs> uh, yeah. If I... Uh... Yeah, this bishop retreat, or horse retreat, seems very good. Well, yeah. Yeah, that's possibly why I missed it. Um, yeah, so had I found that retreat, maybe I would have done that instead, because it seems to mop up the center and continue this pressure toward the king quite cleanly. I picked a dirty path where I sack a bishop, and yeah, there's a lot of details here. Um, yeah, the bishop, it's a very, very heavy piece to be used to try to defend something as lowly as a pawn. But also, like, the king has nowhere to retreat at this point. Um, Trying to build up a castle would just lose materials, so everything's hanging. Uh, yeah, so many loose pieces. This guy, this guy, this one. Oops, not that one. Uh, these four. Um... So, I figured there's, like, no way there are, uh, uh, so, like, I didn't see how they could reinforce this shape. It seems very, very difficult, and they didn't have time to reinforce it anyway. Um... So, yeah, I, I didn't really see how they could make... Maybe there is some counterattack or something incredible that I've missed here. But I would be surprised. Um, yeah, it's... Yeah. Uh, uh, Yeah, this move here, I think this is probably the beginning of the end. Um, because there's no way they can defend the king, and yeah. At, at this point, it just it's a bit much. Um, so yeah, this is a sensible defensive move. Of course, yeah, I'm trying to win the rook. Um, and they did the most natural response, but yeah. Uh, unless you can counterattack, you're lost anyway. I... Uh, yeah, not sure how, but, uh, King 7 9 ain't the way to do it. <laughs> I don't know how you do it.
Um, it looks very confusing, but the the only way you're going to get back into the game is with some kind of counterattack. Um, but also this looks very difficult to find a reasonable counterattack in. Hmm. Yeah, that makes sense, actually. Um, that... Yeah, I mean, losing the Rook is not the worst thing that happens here. Um, unfortunately, the Silver also hangs. So, um, that's a bit of an issue. I didn't even see this. Uh, yeah, this is kind of a big miss on my part. Um, yeah, I, one way or the other, I'm not really sure. Do you take the rook that's not going anywhere but has a lot of potential? Or do you take the knight and get your horse trapped in the corner? It's not able to defend anything. Yeah, and then... I don't know, man. This, this is something. <laughs> uh, wait. Never mind. Uh, you probably bring this so Oh, no. Hmm. Hmm. There's got to be some way to, to solve all the problems here. I don't see an easy way to do it, but there's got to be some answer. This position isn't quite that desperate just yet. Um, oh, actually, maybe this is it. Um, uh, and then the king has to... Oh. Well, shit. Hmm. This is somewhat interesting, but... Um... Hmm. Maybe this isn't as interesting as I thought. Uh... Yeah, this knight drop um, forces the king in the way. So, what else can be tried? Um, oh, hang on. This. <laughs> uh, wait, but no, this is check. Ah. Uh, this is too difficult. <laughs> Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, this is so confusing. I don't know what you do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Bishop. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Uh, here you don't have a rook drop. There's just nowhere to put it. It'd be nice if you had somewhere, but it just didn't work out that way. Hmm. <laughs> It's such a coincidence. Yeah, I... Yeah. <laughs> I 
I've saved much worse game. Or, yeah. It takes extreme luck to try to bail out of this sort of thing. And, yeah, I don't know that there's... Once the silver is hanging here, yeah, it's quite challenging. Um, Yeah, it's having to look for that every single time that I chose not to castle. <laughs> uh, yeah, so many decision points. That's a lot I had to look at. Like, hey, can they drop something like this now? Uh, in cases where they had a bishop, which there were quite a few cases, but and potentially even positions where I was considering like using a bishop to attack, but then they might get the bishop as a result of what I did. Mm -hmm. um, if they give away enough pieces, I'll, of course I'll offer a bishop, but I need to know like if I give them the bishop, am I losing a rook or something? Um, so yeah, it makes sense to try to hold out there, but here it's just, there's, yeah. Uh, Cool. Ah. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. That's quite exciting. Family is awake. AKA a baby. <laughs> yep. Uh, it's funny. Shogi's important to us, and then there's many other important things too. Uh, overall, yeah, the opponent fell for an opening trap, I think. Or they fell into something that I've not been able, when, in circumstances where I've fallen into it, I've not been able to dig myself out of it. Um, maybe once I did. But, um, in general, losing painful games um, reminds me not to fall for things. And, um, yeah, I've fallen for this also. The rook in the center and the bishop pointing both ways. And I've been on both sides of this. After falling for it, um, then maybe a couple hundred games later or something, I got a chance to play this against an opponent. So, yeah. Anyway, um, I was impressed the way the opponent defended throughout the game. Just because you've lost a knight and a lance, or maybe another lance and all that, doesn't ch end the game you can still fight on quite strongly. And I think they pointed out a flaw in my reasoning, too, where if I had just, like, not did the, done this sacrifice, a more reasonable way for me to defend the position would be uh, to hold this square, as well as this one. Um, and, yeah, okay, there are ways the opponent can try to attack and try to make things confusing, but each time they move pieces forward, that creates more weaknesses behind. And so there should be some kind of counterattack available for me here. And besides, this is still covering this line. So, yeah, I think my opponent's correct that something like this is probably the best way about this. Uh, I got impatient and found a dirty win and took it. But, yeah, I think they're correct in this other strategy. Uh, but yeah, the critical moment, I think, came uh, when they did this silver advance. So, so far, they've been discarding a, or losing a couple minor pieces here and there. But otherwise, this shape has been very strong for them. Um, yeah, they... Uh, admittedly, this could be even stronger if, the, if there were some way to connect the pieces. But four generals uh, are not easy to break, no matter how you slice it. Um, we did find a way in. We had to give up a bishop to do it. Did what we had to do, and we got a successful result. So, I hope you enjoyed this game and the analysis. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.